Hey everybody, this is Brother Frank, and welcome to another episode of The Remnant Call. I am in the great state of Texas without my trusty microphone on a set of earbuds, but it's okay because I do have our family member, I would say guest, but he's family, uh, Brother Benjamin on with us tonight. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Brother Benjamin in here and let's get this program going. Benjamin, are you here? Hallelujah, I'm here. Amen, brother. I appreciate it. Listen, brother, there is a lot going on. I know you were sharing a few things earlier with me and some financial stuff and different things in this world that uh, should be concerning to every person. But brother, would you open us up with a word of prayer tonight? Amen. Yes, indeed. I would ask our audience to pray as well. And, you know, I can tell you that men ought always to pray. And right now, a lot of people are not praying. We need to Fix that defect right here and right now. So let's pray. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your truth. We thank you that there is salvation and mercy, healing and forgiveness at the, at the throne of God, at the mercy seat of God because of the blood of Jesus. The nails that were pounded into his hands, his feet. The crown Amen. of thorns that he bore. The stripes cut into his back. Mm. The Lord paid the price for such a great salvation. And Lord, I pray that we, we would have our hearts touched. And our souls could be turned from every wicked way. We would no longer follow the ways of deception, the ways of of confusion, the ways of Babylon. We no longer walk as this nation of wickedness walks. And we could come out from among them and be separate. Lord, I pray you'd bring forth a word of separation tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brother, thank you for coming on. Um, just a quick update, folks. I came back. I had, had to go to Florida last week and um was on some business there and i got back in brother um just in time my wife had been working at um homeless shelter all week and i got in there and got the chance to spend time with the people that night and it was an instant hit of reality you know we've been doing this ministries for years with homeless and and everything but brother i, I heard some tough stories and what a reminder folks that in one moment your life can change look there's some people in this shelters that are using the system i got you but there are some people that are just down on their luck and things have gone wrong and they weren't expecting to be homeless you know before that happened and in one you know in no time flat their lives change folks in no time flat our lives can change also and we what a time what an hour to be focused on the Lord and what he wants to do. So brother, it was a, I, I left out of there. I started to cry on the way home and I called a guy for my work and I just reminded him, I said, our business is not about fixing it and computers. Our business is about ministry and reaching all that we can while we have time. And uh, so anyways, folks, don't forget that we have a mission here, brother, not to go on about it, but it just, it hit me upside the head so hard. I think I just, I don't know. I, I've been not been around it as much lately as I used to be. And um, anyway, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, turn it over to you, Benjamin. All right. Yeah, well, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the enemies really tried to stop this program. Frank, my bookcase, like, I don't know, I touched it on the wrong side or something. And I mean, all my books came crashing down right before we got on the air mm -hmm. like, oh man you know this must be an important program because amen <laughs> and one hindrance after another and we you know i just pray that the lord would speak amen lord these are your people that have gathered together to hear a word of life and of truth in this dark hour and 
And Lord Frank and I can talk to them for you, but it's at this point, Lord, we desperately need to hear directly from you. Amen. We need a Rima word filled with the power of life, Amen. the power of healing, the power of salvation, the power of deliverance. So, Lord, I pray that you would take this time anointed and use it for your purpose in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And, um, you know, our, our, our great hope, our great king is coming. Huyavo, he is coming. Huyavo, al sus lavan, he's coming upon a white horse. And he's wearing a white robe with, with a girdle of pure gold. His hair is white like wool and his eyes are brighter than the sun. His feet are colored bronze as one who has been burned in the fire. The Lord walked through fires of affliction. As he walked through that valley of the shadow of death, he walked Golgotha's hill. He walked to the place of the sacrifice where Abraham lifted up his hand. His son bound on, a, on the kindling of wood and the angel said, touch not the child. Do the lad no harm for the Lord himself will provide a lamb. Hallelujah. The lamb came perfect and without blemish. Amen. The lamb was slain for the covering. To cover the sins of people of God, that we might be permitted to repent. Peradventure, the Lord might give us space to repent and turn from our wicked ways. And we might be able to come into the secret hiding place of the Most High God. If the door would be closed behind us, as the desolation begins to come into the land as the winds of destruction begin to roar. You're going to hear a roar in the wind. It'll literally be the, the satanic powers howling, howling out of their madness, howling in their anger, howling in their own terror as they know that they're, they're literally being blown by their own evil straight into the abyss of hell, which will come upon all of the wicked and in a very short order of time, for we've entered into the very last days. The very time of the end is upon us. But our Lord is coming on a white Amen. horse. Hallelujah. And, you know, just to touch on a few things, is it not amazing? All nations shall hate and shall turn against Israel, and they shall come against Jerusalem. And is it not amazing to see this being fulfilled right before our eyes? A younger generation of Americans is lifting up Osama bin Laden. They're, they're cheering for the descendants of Ishmael who only come to make war. You know, the war that is taking place in Ukraine, the war that is now exploded on a second front in the Middle East, the war that is about to engulf the whole world. At its foundation, it is a spiritual battle that is being fought. And Satan has gathered armies on either shore to cause man to fight his brother until men be no more. And then that's what this is. And there's there's conflict and there's hatred and there's and and brother against brother. Man's enemies are the members of his own household, and and everywhere Satan can, he's bringing conflict and division so the red horse of war is rampaging across the earth and they that hate thee shall be clothed with shame the scripture declares and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to nothing the word for hate is shane hebrew and it it means to hate personally this isn't just blanket the hatred. This is a hatred that is personal. The hatred of an enemy, odious, utterly full of wrath, hate that has come forth out of hell itself. These people that hate the 
people of God are literally manifesting the very hatred of Satan, his dominions. There was a pastor, you probably saw the news, preaching the gospel just on a street corner in, in Arizona yesterday, shot in critical condition. We lift him up right now. Lord, bring this brother to complete health. No weapon shall be formed against him that can prosper. Lord, don't let this weapon that was brought against this brother prosper. I pray for miraculous healing. Show the nations who is the true God, the salvation, the healing, and the deliverance of your people, Lord. They that hate you will be clothed with shame, and their dwelling place shall come to nothing. That word for shame is bosheth, and it means confusion, to be greatly put to shame. They're not going to be a little bit ashamed. They're going to be destroyed with shame. And their dwelling place will come to nothing. The word is ayin, and it means non-existent. Nothing. To be completely removed. They will have no dwelling place among the living. There will be no dwelling place in the earth. They won't even have a place of burial in the, in the ground of the earth. Rather, their place for eternity will be in the lake of fire that burns with brimstone. In, within this lake is the fullness of the wrath of an infinite God. And woe unto them. Woe unto them. The time is at hand. The nation is turning in wrath against People of God turning in wrath against the teachings of Jesus, embracing the lie, calling it the truth. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what's been going on behind the scenes. And, you know, you've all heard about the Great Reset, you know, which is the plan of the satanic elite to basically steal everything. The enemy came to steal to kill and destroy. Well, they came to steal everything. I'm going to explain to you tonight how they're going to do it. They came to utterly destroy us. They came to kill us totally. But their weapons, their designs, their plans will not stand. We are the people of God. And the Lord is going to turn back this flood. Hallelujah. But I want to talk about a book called The Great Taking. And you guys... You can find this on the internet. Maybe we'll post, Frank, when you get a chance, I'll send you a link and you can post the PDF link for this book. Sure. It's written, it's written by a hedge fund manager, a guy who's an, a, an expert in the financial system, an expert on Wall Street. And I'm just going to give you a few quotes from the book and explain to you the basic message that he's brought forth. And this is from the introduction. What is this book about? It's about the taking of collateral. By collateral, we mean the assets that secure the debts of the world. And I'm talking about your house, your bank account, your retirement plan, your savings account, your car, your gold, all of the assets that you own and that every, all of the citizens of the earth own, whether they be little whether the, or they be much, this is the collateral that is going to be taken. This book is about the taking of collateral from the general public and the taking of all of it. The end game of this global debt accumulation super cycle is upon us. What is being executed is a long plan, intelligently designed, basically grand theft scheme, the audacity and scope of which may be difficult for you to wrap your mind around. All privately owned personal and real property financed with any amount of debt will be taken as will the assets of all privately owned businesses which have used debt financing. And even if partially successful, and they, they will be more than partially successful, 
This will constitute the greatest conquest and subjugation of humanity in the history of the world. We're now living within a hybrid war. This war is being conducted primarily through deception. The design and the goal of this war is to achieve victory with the littlest cost possible. And it's a war of conquest directed not against nation states, but against humanity itself. Private, closely held control of the central banks of the world through which the money creation within the banking systems of each nation is controlled and manipulated by a very small group of people who control the central banks and as a result, control the creation of credit. And through the control of money, they've achieved the control of the political systems of all of the major nations, the governments, the intelligence agencies, and their various front organizations, the armed forces, the police, the major corporations, and of course, the media. These, these are the powers that be. George Soros once commented, you don't know what they can do, but we're about to find out. Now, you might seek comfort in thinking that, that I, this book sounds crazy and that nothing like this has ever happened before, but it has. This happened in the 1930s where they intentionally crashed the economy. They raised interest rates in the face of a contracting business cycle. They caused the depression to be deeper and longer than it ever should have been. And in the process, they collapsed the majority of the private banks. And so the general public lost all of their money, but they still owed on their loans. And so the houses and the cars and even the home appliances that had been financed with this new thing called consumer credit, they were all foreclosed. All the assets went back to their true owners which is the satanic elite of the world. And so the financial system must be restarted. And it, restarting it will take the collapse of the current system and the foreclosure of all property. It will take all of the property, and that is your property, what you thought was your property. And how this will happen is a grand collapse at the end of this debt expansion cycle, which is now upon us. No nation will be unscathed. There'll be no winners. Or will there be winners? The heirs of the people that created this fiat money system have known for decades that another massive financial collapse has been planned. And they have been preparing. For them, it is an absolute imperative to remain in control through the collapse and the following great reset. Otherwise, they risk being discovered, investigated, and prosecuted. These crises are not occurring by accident. They're being intentionally created in order to consolidate the power and the wealth of the satanic ruling elite and reduce, balance the hum human family to servitude and slavery. How is this accomplished? By expanding money and debts to unsustainable levels and then turning off the cash flow, raising interest rates. Today, money velocity, which is the rate that the money supply turns over in the economy, it's the money supply divided by the total production, the GNP of the economy, and when the money supply turns over roughly on a one-to-one -one ratio with total economic transactions, it means there's no financial leverage. The money doesn't create any additional demand. It doesn't create any productivity. It doesn't create any growth. And yet the interest is compounding. And as they print money to pay and create interest, if there's no growth, the economy just quickly drowns in a sea of debt to total income. That's where we're at right now. And this process is irreversible. 
oh, there is an end game that's been planned for all of us. But the average person is completely unaware. Now, how is this being done? And I'm just going to boil this down pretty simply. The whole concept of property rights is a, is a creation of Western law, European common law, American law, the concept that you own your property. The property is yours. And you have certain rights to the protection of your property. The free ownership of property is what makes us free. In a communist system, you can't own property. And if you don't have your own property... You cannot ever be free. You have to continue to pay rent on your property. You have to continue to work for the landlord. And you are nothing more than the servant or the serf. And in a totally controlled system, you have no lobbying power. There's no unions to represent you. You get the wages that they assign to you. You pay the prices in the company-owned store. You pay the rent in the apartment or the house or the tenement that you're living in and there's no money left over you can never escape the slavery in which they've got humanity trapped it's a grand scheme that was set up to confiscate confiscate all of the collateral dematerializing all of the securities and i'll explain that term in a moment the planning for this began over half a century ago and it was the strategic purpose behind this huge financial bubble and behind the what's called disintermediation of all these assets in which all in which all of the assets whether it be your mortgage or or all of the loans on all the various things auto loans and student loans and home loans and credit card loans they were all pooled up into these huge investment pools and then sold to a thousand institutions and so the risk was multiplied layer upon layer, layer upon layer. And now the world is drowning in debt. But in the process of this super leveraging of the world, behind the closed doors of, of banking laws and arcane financial regulations, the ruling elite began to change the rules of the game. And they changed the definition and the meaning of the word property and today, these assets that you think you own, you own in what is called book entry form. Well, you're the registered owner if you want to consider being the person that deposited these assets into the system as ownership. But above you in the chain of title are the money center banks that have provided the top level of credit to the clearing houses where all of this paper trades hands. And in order to preserve the security of the financial system, the government has changed the rules and the courts have already ruled on whether this is legal and they've ruled that it is because the survival of the system must be given precedent over the survival of the individual or the survival of the people. The beast must be protected, even if it means the population reduced to slavery. So how does this work? These massive banks have divided their risks, their liabilities, and their assets into different subsidiaries. And your assets are, are claims, they're unsecured claims of a creditor against the assets that are in the asset side of this equation. And when the system collapses, those assets which have been posted as collateral for supernational or supernatural liability coverage, those assets will be taken to satisfy the claims of the senior lien holders, which are the money center banks that are providing the credit at the top of the pyramid. So the average person, you're reduced to the status of an unsecured creditor in a bankruptcy. The stocks you thought you own, you don't own those stocks. Those stocks are not even in that bank. They've been lent out and sold short by a mutual fund or a hedge fund in a foreign country and then re 
They've they've traded hands five, six, seven times. All of these securities have been spread all over the globe. And when the whole house of cards come down and they crash the total system, and right now there's 400 trillion of notional value of derivative contracts and notional value is the, the stated um, metric on which the contract is based. For example, interest rate derivatives, they'll cover the interest rate exposure on, let's just say it's a billion dollar notional contract. Well, if the interest rate is 5%, then the contract, the economics of the contract are the billion dollars of notional value times 5%. So it's really a $50 million contract as to interest payments each year, but it's a billion dollar contract in notional terms. Well, the 400 trillion at 5%, that's $20 trillion of interest, you guys. <laughs> that would consume the most of the GDP of the United States. And that's just the interest rate contracts. There's contracts on all types of risks. There's interlocking hedges and contracts. They have so geared this thing up that its collapse is going to be astonishing. People will not believe this level of collapse was possible. And we could see these markets drop 70, 30, then 50, then 70% in a matter of days. And they could be down 90, 95% in a matter of months. All collateral values have collapsed. The top level debts will basically seize all the collateral. They won't even be discharged in full. All of the junior liabilities will be wiped out. All of the general public will be wiped out. And all of the assets that are now worth cents on the dollar will be owned by the Illuminati and the Great Reset will be accomplished. And all of this will be done legally. Never attempt to win by force what can be won through deception. The greatest subjugation in world history is about to occur and it has been made possible by the invention of a single legal construction, a subterfuge, a deception, a lie out of the mouth of the serpent. And the words are security entitlement. It may come as a shock to you that your personal property, the rights of personal property no longer extend to securities. And that now all you have is a claim similar to a junior creditor. You've been led to believe you own these things but someone else actually secretly controls your collateral. They control your securities as their collateral. And now they've established legal certainty. And this has been tested and been, been, has been successful in the courts. But they have absolute power to take all of your assets, your house that's been leveraged because you won't be able to pay the mortgage, your car that's been financed, because you won't be able to pay the mortgage. They may actually come and take the personal property that you bought with credit cards, claiming the same rights. Virtually everything will be seized in this complete takeover. And the general public will be reduced to insolvency. The money in our banks will be gone. The banks will be reorganized. Your account went to zero. But don't worry, the global elite, their bank accounts still have newly created cash. But to, to make everything fair, you'll be given a new cell phone and you're going to get minimum basic income. Isn't that wonderful? They're going to give you a few beast tokens, beast coins that you can spend to, to buy your bug burgers and... um you can live in your tenement housing. Maybe they'll let you rent one of the rooms in your house they took from you. And you'll have four or five other families in it with you. And all of this will have been done by legal sleight of hand. Oh, but in order to use your central bank digital currency units, you're going to have to have a mark in your hand or your forehead. If you really want to eat that bug burger, you got to show the tattoo, right? 
well, thank God I don't care for bug burgers. And we're not taking any of these satanic marks. And, you know, the Lord has another plan to blow this up in the face of the satanic elite. And most of these assets they're thinking they're taking here in the United States, they're actually going to get incinerated. So I guess, you know, the joke's on them. But folks, you know, don't, don't get upset. But I'm telling you, you know, get used to the idea that, you know, if you have any significant assets at this point, you're probably going to lose them. You know, the wealth that that was America, if it wasn't burned in the fire, it would have been seized by the enemy. And, and this is all legal. Ownership of securities as property, which was the law 40 years ago, has been replaced with a new legal concept of security entitlement which is a, contact, a contractual claim assuring that the actual owner has a weak subordinate creditor position only because all assets, all securities are held in unsegregated pool form. Even if they told you these are segregated assets, they're not. At another level, they've been unsegregated and they've been traded and retraded and nobody even knows where they are. The absolute priority claim of the secured creditors to your assets has been upheld by the courts. Uh, you'd be greatly mistaken if you dismissed what I'm telling you as conspiracy theory, because this is reality under the law of, of not only our country. They've normalized the legal system all over the world. So what we're facing in the next global panic is a game of musical chairs that when the music stops, you're going to find out none of the people in the general public will have a seat. No, all the chairs have been removed from the room. There's 13 of them and there's 13 families sitting in them and they own everything now. And the reason given is that, that this was necessary to ensure the stability of the system. The beast is too big to fail. And so he has to devour everything. Now, I would leave you to the book, The Great Taking. If you want to get into the details and the, the actual laws that have been changed, you can read the legislation for yourself. I can assure you this is really happening to us. And so how quickly are they taking the system down? You know, well, they haven't announced the date, but I, I'll, it will, I will not be surprised if the system goes down this year. Well, Benjamin, I mean, you've seen how Bill Gates is buying up all the bought up all huge portions of our farm, trying to plan for our genetically modified plant, his genetically modified plant burgers and everything else. The Chinese have bought up our land and property, folks. I mean, there is a takeover that happens and the news has been telling us and nobody's doing anything about it. They've been prepping for this day for years. Oh, yeah. And now with a completely devoid population of any moral values anymore and an anti-Semitic tone across our, the entire United States, um, we're ripe for the fall. Oh, the, we're here. We're, we're at the end of the game. And the collapse is going to make people, it's going to blow their mind. We're going to have a bank holiday that, that could last. They'll close the markets. When the crisis first hits, they're going to close the market. They'll close the banks. Everything will be closed. When it reopens, there won't be any money in, in your account or my account. Now, so what are you going to do? What can we do? This is coming. This has been planned. This is going to happen. And it could happen sooner than later. There, there are reports that a massive wave of terrorism may be coming upon the country. Operation Catastrophe is the, the rumored name of it. And we could be looking at, at from sea to shining sea, terrorist attacks all over the United States. You know, perhaps on a, a on a holiday coming soon to you, or perhaps perhaps later in this year or the very part of, of next year. But th this stuff's coming, brothers and sisters. So what are we what are we gonna do? Well, you know what? If you don't have a lot of money in stocks or bonds or cash or you know if you're if you have a, a small amount of money in a in your basic checking account and you're you're paying your bills and you're living 
you know, you're living um, within your means, you don't have a problem. You have nothing to worry about. This really won't affect you other than when it hits, whatever's in your checking account will get reduced to zero. And, um, you know, hopefully you've, you've prepared with uh, reserves of the things you're going to need. For people that have money squirreled away, you know, the scripture told us, don't try to set your house on high and avoid the day of judgment, you know, thinking that because you've got, you know, gold in your fire safe or whatever, that somehow this will protect you from the day of judgment. All of this is going to burn. So what do we do? Well, you know, obviously you should probably have some money out of the bank. Get some cash. If you've got savings that you plan on keeping, some of it, maybe most of it, maybe even all of it should be in cash. What else can we do? Give to the Lord. What we don't give to God and what we don't convert into usable assets right now, what we leave in the system will be taken by the beast. So what would you rather do? Give it to the Lord put it into assets that will survive or let the beast take it. Okay. There's no credit for the third choice. And, you know, now some people have so much money that that they can't stop that outcome. You know, if you're, if you're a billionaire, <laughs> you're not going to get it in cash. And, um, you know, most of the billionaires that I know, they're not going to give it all away either. You know, because, I mean, the bigger the pile of money, the greater the, what's the word? Greed. Yeah, figure it out. for hey, Everyone's got their own, but boy, I'll tell you, those things have a way. That money has a way of owning you, right? And, um, you know, what was the point of that? Because what does it benefit you to inherit the whole world if you then lose your soul? So I just wanted to give you guys the heads up that this legally, this can be done. Strategically, this is the plan. The time is at hand. So, you know, if you're going to do anything, maybe you should get busy, and, you know, do it quickly. And if you're looking for places to donate that you know will bless the, the poor, um, I would point you to you know, our favorite charity. And uh, it's answer the call. Right? Answer the call international.org. I'll put yeah, the link okay. up. But in any event, the Lord said, if you bless Israel, I'll bless you. If you, if you give to widows and orphans, if you give to feed the poor, the Lord said, I will count it as a loan and I will repay you. At this point, brothers and sisters, we really need to challenge ourselves. Now, if you don't understand what time it is and, you know, you, you still want to, you still want to take care of, you know, your retirement into, into decades later, in, you know, here in Babylon, if that's the page you're on, look, run with it, go with it. You got to do what you got to do. But if you realize the lateness of the hour, brothers and sisters, you know, when the mark comes in, we're not going to be doing business in the B system. And um, so I would encourage everybody you know, seriously pray about what Jesus said. If you give to help the poor, I will count it as a loan to me and I will repay you. And, and you know, the Lord is the only person that has the credit and the capability. He's got the wealth. He's got the resources. He's got the power. He can pay you back under all circumstances. And he's the only one. So. You know, it's sort of like a, you know, do we really believe? I mean, everybody believes when it's, you know, when it's time to go out for pie and coffee after church. We're all rejoicing. But, you know, when it comes to putting our money where our mouth is, do we really believe? When it comes to putting our faith where our mouth has been, you know, are we willing to fast and pray? Are we willing to forego that, you know, feeding the flesh for a few hours or maybe for a day? And are we willing to put our money where our mouth is? Um, now, you got to do what's right in your eyes. And every one of us is accountable for the revelation that we've received. But I can tell you, in 
from everything that I'm seeing, this war that has expanded from Europe to now the Middle East, this is World War III. And when it goes down, whatever was left in the U.S. stock market, there's not going to be a New York stock exchange. There will not be a NASDAQ stock exchange. The vast majority of these companies, they won't even exist. Those shares will never be retraded again. The U.S. dollar will be confetti. U.S. debt, treasury debt, U.S. corporate debt, worthless. U.S. real estate, if it didn't burn, you're walking on it anyway. Be staying here more than six months to a year following the war. Go look it up for yourself in Jeremiah 50 and 51. They shall all depart. So, you know, what are you going to do? You know, take your house with you? I don't think so. You're going to take your gold with you? No, your gold will be removed. It's in the scriptures. Your silver, they will throw it in the streets. And, you know, we're going to be eating manna in the wilderness, you guys. Mm. So, you know, let's step up. Be wise as Bereans. Search it out for yourself. Pray about it. Get the direction for you and your family. But considering the, the perilous time in which we're living, maybe we should all prayerfully consider stepping out of the boat in faith. Mm. Maybe we should walk on the water, take a few steps on the water with Jesus. The Lord didn't have a retirement account. He didn't have a checking account. The Lord didn't even have a single coin in his pocket. And he went around doing good, destroying the works of the devil and walking in the will of his father. And the Lord, the father sent people to help him. There were, there were women that had realized that this was the ministry of the Messiah of Israel. And they realized the blessing that it was to contribute financially to the ministry of Jesus Christ. And I'm talking about you know, not the charlatans on TV. The actual ministry of Jesus was financed by other people, not the Lord. So too, God's going to provide for his remnant people. You know, and we need to learn to be givers. But you've also got to be wise. You know, don't give money to guys flying in private jets. Don't give money to people that buy $35,000 dogs. You know, do your giving to ministries that are actually blessing people of God, that are blessing Israel, that are blessing the widows, the orphans, like Answer the Call International. And, you know, I don't know how much longer we've got, but, you know, I, I know one thing. When the Lord translated me into the future, and this was in 1996, and, and um, you know, and within a week I'd been fired from my job and, Next thing I know, I'm, you know, losing my house and I had about, I don't know, not very much money left. And, and the Lord told me, I want you to give $7,000 to this missions ministry. I, and I, I didn't, I barely had 7,000 in my bank account. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, I just got, I just lost my job. I don't have any visible means of support. You want me to give away virtually everything? I want you to give now. And I thought, you know what? I'm in the army. I'm like, fine. And and I started writing out that check. And then, this, you know, this sounds pretty lame because this is a, you know, this sounds like the kind of stories that that all those criminals that appear on Christian TV that are just looting the people. Frank and I are not asking you to give us your money. I don't want your money. No. I'm asking you to give it to a ministry that's going to bless the, the people of God, that's going to bless the orphans, that's going to bless the widows, that's going to do real good. But, you know, literally, as I'm writing this check for $7,000, before I finish writing the check, my phone is ringing and it's this company that had just fired me. And they weren't. They were going to give me two weeks severance. That was it. And um, they called me up and they they started apologizing. They're like, we don't even know what we were thinking. We, we apologize. We're going to give you 
a full severance as the same package we gave our, all the group of employees that had recently been laid off. And we've calculated all, you know, your vacation and your sick pay and blah, 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 back bonuses that we owed you. And they added it all up and they said, and we figured out we owe you, a, we, we owe you a check in the amount of $70,000. And God had told me to give seven, but I didn't have the check <laughs> until I started writing. And uh, you know what, folks? I was at the end of my, I was at the end of the line. I had lost everything in my life. It was all gone. You know, I had a little bit of money left. God's like, I want you to give away the money too. Okay, fine. Let's make a clean sweep of it, you know? Yeah, take it. And, um, you know, 20 some plus years later, God has prospered me, you know? I'm, I got blessed mightily, but I had to step out. And, uh, you know, this is not a call for you to send money to Frank or Benjamin. We do not want or need your money. We desperately need your prayers. Please pray. But you know what? Pray also that God would show you what he wants you to do. Because you know what? We're going to all feel pretty stupid if, you know, two, three weeks from now, a month, whatever, six months, we wake up one morning and everything you own financially is gone. Bye-bye. And you're like sitting there going, wow, you know, I just lost $100,000. I just lost half a million dollars. I just lost millions of, you know, some of my close friends, eh, you just lost 70 million, bro. You know, that maybe wasn't so smart. Maybe we should have built another orphanage building or, you know, there's not going to be any credit for letting the beast steal the wealth that God gave into each of our hands. So let's step out in faith. And, you know, I, I firmly believe that when your heart is right and you're doing things because you're trying to bless the Lord or you're doing things because you're blessing God's people, the poor, the widows, the orphans, and you're not being stupid and just writing a check or I'll just get rid of, you know, to the next ministry that comes along. You go do your research. You find, you know, the, the what is truly a ministry that is doing the work of, of God and the, and the leadership is operating in the Holy Spirit. You know, you can't, you can't avoid getting blessed by blessing that work. It's like the widow that took in Elisha. Right. And and she tells her husband, you know, this is a man of God. And why don't we we'll give him a we'll make a little room up for him and we'll, we'll put a little bed. We'll get him we'll, we'll get him a table and a lamp and. And maybe we'll get him a, some writing instruments. And when it, when he comes through this way, he he can stay with us and we will bless him. We'll, we'll bless him with food. We'll bless him with help. We'll we'll bless the man of God. And, you know, go read the story. <laughs> Elijah and Elijah both had similar, similar women, similar believers who came to help them. And go read what happened to those people that decided to bless the man of God. Amen. It worked huge, but they did it because of their love for the Lord and because of their love for the people of God. Same thing holds true, you guys. Look, go do your homework, but we got to be smart from this time forward. And, and I am very serious. Frank and I really need your prayers, you guys. And you know what? People are not praying. They're watching the news. I don't know whether everybody's busy. We're all so busy right now. And and the news is crazy. It's changing by the day, you know, and it's almost an addiction. I mean, I get it. You know, at one point, the Lord told me, lose the news because it was like, it was attacking my faith. I mean, it was, I was just getting anxious and fearful and, you know, and I, I'm actually not really afraid of this thing, but, but that spirit of fear, I mean, some of these so-called watchmen, they're speaking out of a spirit of fear. Ooh. Listen to these guys, that demon's coming with that message. You don't need a spirit of fear in this hour. You need the spirit of love, peace, and of a renewed mind. But you know what, you guys, our lives at this point, whether we live or die and what's about to happen, we can't affect that outcome. 
I don't care what you do. You cannot affect that outcome. I don't care how much gold you have, how much tuna fish you have, how much double op buck you have. I don't care how many rifles and how many guys, how many soldiers. I don't care. The Lord's going to make the decision. And those that have been chosen, those that have been found worthy, that are in the remnant, it will be by the direct commandment of the Lord that they got delivered. And if not, if the Lord doesn't protect the city, the watchmen watch in vain. And that's what this time is going to be like. So, you know, it's not like if we've got extra resources. You know what? They're really not going to do you any good. You really would be better served to be prayerfully giving them to where, to the ministries that the Lord would direct. And you know, now, now don't act just on my words, right? Let every word of truth be confirmed by two or more witnesses. Don't be impulsive. Please stop being impulsive. Fast and pray. Get together with your family, with your spouse, with your friends. Pray about this. Seek, seek the mind of God in this matter. But I don't think you can make a mistake by investing in the kingdom of God or by blessing the poor, blessing ministries that reach out to widows and orphans. And so I'll leave you guys with that. And, and Frank, would it be okay if I gave some homework? Absolutely. I'm going to give some homework because we're going to get into some really fun stuff next time. So you guys, if you have a pen or, you know, stop this and, you know, come back and with a pen and a paper, I want you to read Daniel seven. I want you to, I want you to really focus on verses nine through 22. Okay. And then, then I want you to read De Jeremiah 30 and, um, I want you to start at the beginning of the chapter. Hallelujah. And I want you to, to read all the way through uh, Jeremiah 30. Um, and then I want you to read. Hold on. Let me get this right. I want you to read Revelation chapter 12. And I want you to look for the similarities of what you find in Jeremiah 30 being repeated in Daniel 7. And again, it's being revealed yet again in Revelation 12. And, and we're going to get into it in a pretty deep way in the, next, uh, in the next Bible study message that I bring. And God bless all you guys. And, and yes, please keep us in prayer times have come upon us get ready for things to begin moving fast now brothers and sisters and god bless everyone amen yeah and folks please not, not to go over this again but just to be clear benjamin and i are asking for nothing no money just prayer i had a p.o box at one time I, that, that will not be renewed I, I don't, I don't, I, I thankful there were some people that through the years that helped and blessed the remnant call. We were so appreciative. We did right by that money. And um, I gave a lot to Africa just to be transparent and open um, to people that were in need. And um, I never, you know, for me personally, um, I always tried to keep the highest integrity with everything, but I don't want any money or, you know, we never asked for it and we don't want it. Thank you, though, uh, for everything. But find answer the call international or another ministry that the Lord's laid on your heart that is reputable. Do not give to an unholy altar. Do not send your money to these charlatans out there playing church that are not really. Stay away from these ministries that all they do is keep constantly running commercials for the next thing you need to buy from them. Okay, do the right thing. The people that are actually on the front lines fighting the good fight, support those people. And God will bless you. There's not there, there's nothing in it. You know, not too long ago, the Lord laid a ministry on my heart for around my house area of something. And we're actually bringing that to fruition right now. It's in the process. We're getting things done um, because that's something. But that that's what he laid on my heart and my burden, you know, that to do right here. And I'm excited about it. But you do what, the, like Benjamin said, out of the mouth of two or more witnesses shall all things be confirmed. Okay, 
pray, seek the Lord and allow him to guide in all things. And folks, you, you will never give and when you give with the right spirit and be sad, you know, you will though receive the blessing of knowing that you've helped and done something good for somebody else. And, and there's going to be some times when, like Benjamin said, you're going to have to step out of the boat. But if you never step out of the boat, you'll never give the Lord the opportunity to say, peace, be still. You've got to step into stormy waters at times, or you can't get that blessing of the Lord calming the seas before your feet. This is Brother Benjamin and Brother Frank on the Remnant Call saying to everybody, good night and shalom. Trumpet in Zion, sound.